How about that? Welcome to the September 20th meeting of the Mobile City Planning Commission. I'd like to take a moment to review our general operating procedures. Our meeting is divided into two sessions, the public hearing session and the deliberation session. In the public hearing session, an application or group application on the agenda is called. The applicant makes his or her presentation, commission members ask questions, if any, members of the public make their comments. Only four people may speak for an agenda item and four against. Each speaker is limited to five minutes two questions by the commission. After four minutes, a loud beep will indicate one minute left to speak. And at this point, please summarize your comments. After all opposition speakers have finished, the applicant will be given time to respond. If you do intend to speak, please come to the podium, speak into the microphone, and give your name and address for our minutes. If you do Please direct all comments to the commission only and not to the applicant or the audience. And please remember to speak directly into the microphone. On routine applications, the applicant may simply raise his or her hand if there are no objections to the staff recommendations. I will then announce the applicant is in full agreement with those recommendations. If there are any questions, the applicant will be given an opportunity to respond. After hearing all applications, the commission will go into the deliberation session. In the deliberation session, the commissioners discuss each application with input from the staff as necessary, but with no input from the audience. Yes. The commissioners then vote on each application. Results of the voting can be learned from the planning department. If some issues are in the deliberation session that were not addressed in the public hearing, the chairman has the discussion either to allow additional comments pertaining to those issues in order to resolve them or call for the application to be held over for discussion at a future meeting. Occasionally, one or more commission members may recuse themselves from discussing and voting on a given application. A recusal does not necessarily mean the member is directly involved with the apl application or the applicant. Depending upon the circumstances, ethical rules may require a recusal when there is only the slightest difference of a conflict of interest. Mm -hmm. If a regular member recuses, a supernumerary will vote in their stead unless both, both supernumeraries are already voting due to absences. The planning committee can make final decisions subject to appeal on subdivisions, planning approvals, planned unit developments. The Planning Commission only makes recommendations on zoning applications, with the City Council making the final decisions. Please turn off all cell phones at this time. Commissioner and staff, please remember to turn on your microphones when speaking. Uh, I'm Libba Latham, Jennifer Denson. Here. John Dallas. Here. Shirley Sessions. Alan Cameron. Here. Taylor Atchison. Here. Matt Anderson. Here. Nick Amberger. Here. Bess Ritt. Here. Don Hembry. Here. And Clark Blackwell. Here. We, a quorum has been established. Um, Ms. Biko. Thank you, Ms. Latham. Um, I'd just like to take a few minutes to introduce uh, new commission members um, recently um, appointed and sworn in um, by Mayor Stimson. Uh, first, we have Mr. Matt Anderson. Uh, Matt is a special projects manager uh, for the Mayor's Office, um, so we welcome him. And also, we have Mr. Cart Blackwell uh, with the Mobile Carnival Association. Uh, he's a curator uh, with that organization and also a historic preservation. So we're excited to have um, these new commissioners um, here to give it of their time uh, to this body. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Big. Uh, I will call number one, 1610 Union Street. Is the applicant present in agreement with the recommendations? Is anyone here to speak in favor of this application? Is anyone here to speak against it? Thank you. Number two, uh, the east side of Clear, Clear Creek Drive. Um, it has been recommended that the applicant withdraw the app. Oh, hello. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Brittle Rail with Poly Surveying. Um, I guess something happened after I left uh, last meeting uh, it was set to be approved and then 
now it's back on the agenda. I have, I have read through the report, and it, it appears to me that uh, potentially the questions come, coming are truly a right of way. Uh, I will tell you that we surveyed the property. It's monumented as if there's a right of way there. The, the, uh, I have an old survey that uh, Mr. Bird did years ago that shows a right of way through there as well. He did the subdivision to the north. All indications are that there, there's a right of way. What I'm going to ask for is some time to get a title search done fully to see, you know, what's truly going on here. I know there's also, uh, it was not in the initial report on September 6th that fire, I guess, has, has asked for a public road be built. I'm not sure if that came from engineering and fire. Um, along with then six inch water line. There's all kind of major things going on here. This is three parcels that my client purchased. Uh, we're just trying to make those legal lots to build three residential homes. You know, if we were to push in a road, I mean, this isn't a, uh, this property values, um, you know, not very high uh, in relation to build a, a, a road at $450 a linear foot for three homes is absolutely not going to happen. So uh, I guess my client may have purchased something now that is deemed unusable for any type of development without moving forward if the commission chooses is to uh, push push us in that push us in that direction. So um, I'm, I'm going to need some time. This just popped up on me yesterday. Uh, did not expect it to even be on the agenda. Uh, so if if I could have you know not a standard holdover, maybe more like three meetings so that I could have some time, some time to address that. That would be more than fair. Three meetings would be November 2nd. I, I think we could do that. It would get some time to get title to look at it and maybe have an opportunity to speak with fire and, and engineering and see what options may be there. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Orwell. Oh. <clears throat> Number three, 61 Jordan Lane, the applicant present. Jerry Bird, Bird Surveying Company for the applicant. Um, condition four and six is what we'd like to talk about. Um, condition four limits the lot to a single curb cut. Condition four, traffic engineer wants to limit it to the existing curb cut cuts. I had mentioned in a narrative to him, there's a horseshoe drive existing in the front yard. Uh, we wanted to keep those two curb cuts. Um, only reason we're down here is to move the building back a little closer to the street so that they can put an addition on the front of the house and they do not want to remove a curb cut. And like I say, uh, it'd just be changing to existing curb cuts um, would be good. That's the only thing. And six already does that. You what? Six mentioned. Yeah. Cuts, plural. Okay. Right. A lot is limited to existing curb cuts on number six. Mm -hmm. Do I? Lot is limited to existing curb cuts, plural. On number well, that's six. what traffic engineering says. Right, which is good. That's you want that? Yeah, I want number six. <laughs> number four, I'd just like four. to change to two our existing curb cuts on number four. Yeah, that's what we do. Set this Thank you, Mr. Bird. Any, does anybody have any questions? Thank you. Are you finished? Okay. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone here speaking against it? Thank you. Number four, Golden Subdivision, 1341 and 1351 Cody Road North. It has been recommended for tentative approval. The applicant is here. It is indicated that he is in agreement. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this? application is there anyone here to speak against it thank you number five is majestic division 7911 airport boulevard it's been recommended for tentative approval the applicant jerry bird 
bird surveying. Yeah. We'll talk curb cuts again. It's condition three this time. Uh, recommendation is one curb cut per lot or two on lot one shared with lot two, one of them shared with lot two. If you look at the aerial photograph, there's in front of this property or in front of lot one especially, it's kind of like a service road all set over and their curb cut comes in off of it and you can see the driveway that comes in on the uh, west end of kind of like a deceleration lane we would like to maintain that curb cut area and the existing curb cut on lot two which number I'm sorry uh, three Number two, two. Condition three. I think it's number two. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. All right. I'm, I'm just see. It's not existing curb cuts. All right. We can stay with number two, but then number three talks about them also. Yeah. Number two will be fine, limited to. Existing curb cuts. So you're okay with number two? Yeah, existing. I, item, item three, though, that doesn't talk about, I talk about uh, the 25 foot minimum, minimum building setback line. Yeah. It, does traffic have a comment about this? If they are only wanting to keep the two existing curb cuts for the two individual lots, is that what I'm hearing you say? Or do you want lot two to have its own lot as well, her own curb cut as well? Uh, we'd like for it to have its own in the same, in that kind of a deceleration uh, lane, like it exists. exists. Okay. Um, it could, it'd have to be widened if they, if they do it commercially, but. so. I would disagree, disagree that it's a service road. Uh, I would say that it's the commercial property is expanded into the right of way because it's really just in front of this parcel. Um, I know my comments on, hold on, number seven are very wordy, and I usually am not this wordy about curb cuts, but I wanted, I really don't need any additional curb cuts closer, further west than what exists right now. Right. because of its location at the end of the deceleration lane people are looking over their shoulder they're not looking in front of them to see, see what's coming out of a driveway mm -hmm. so that's right. that's my grave concern How about the curb cut on lot two the western lot limited to the east 40 feet of the lot or 50 feet or from the existing curb cut over i can get that measured and and uh, we pin it down but like I say, if you develop it commercial, which it will be, it, it's going to have to be widened. Okay. Okay. What's there? What's there now? You think has to be widened? Because it is, it's quite. Can you? Um, the aerial is really far out. I mean, I can, can, I can see the footprint of the asphalt from now, and it almost looks like it's an. I mean, because really, you can only go right. You can turn right into this site, or right, right at this driveway. So it's. That, that's a lot. I mean, there's asphalt basically from, it looks like there's a parked car there yeah. all the way to that median nose. And that to me looks over 50 feet wide. And it looks like it already extends in front of the second lot that you're trying to create. So if you keep the one that's there, I would prefer it to be shared with the lot too. So you can keep the one to the east, but the one, the one there really needs to be shared with lot two. It's, it's hard to see on the aerial exactly where everything lies and all that, but yeah. um, if, if you want to remain, um, I hate to say open-ended, but not restrict them at this time, it's always possible in the future that that arrangement of DAWs may not be that way. Sometimes that configuration isn't always the safest because people are having to look so far over their shoulder. That's probably a design that was put in more recently than not to allow that swinging lane. It's possible that that lane may one day go back up into the intersection and the idea of another curb cut is not a problem. Right. So if you want to leave it open-ended to just not specify a certain number just approved by traffic engineering, I think we can still work it out with the developer. Okay. 
if I mean if that satisfies the commission, unless you just want to want to see it, this is a. Well, there. Yeah. The effort is is to sell a lot too, mm -hmm. and and he's maintaining the ownership. That's his business on lot one, and um, whatever that that driveway will need to be addressed. Well, then it, well, we'll it may be in a year, maybe. It, it may be advantageous then, since it's part of a sale, to say um, approved by engineering, but may, or by traffic engineering, but may be limited to shared access if if deemed necessary. Just so there's a record of it on the plat when it's sold. Right. That that's a possibility, so the property owner can't okay. raise an arm and hand and, and have a problem later. Right. If that's if that's okay with everyone, if that's a condition I can live with. Okay. Well, I, I believe the note two basically says that a placement on the note with the final plat stating that each lot is limited to its existing curb cut, with any changes in their sizes, locations, and design to be approved by traffic traffic hearing. I think they. Yeah. Still giving them two cuts. You right. you okay with note, note number yeah, two? So will we have yeah. to strike one of the later notes? I think strike number three. Just strike three and leave number two? Yeah. Does that, does that right. seem appropriate? I think you want You want number three struck. You prefer to right. see that not there. We'll get it worked out. But you're okay with number two and knowing that the potential owner or current owner or potential owners will just have to coordinate with traffic engineering. Okay. I think what we're looking at is number two to be amended, placement of a note on the final plus stating that all driveway sizes, locations, or designs to be approved by traffic engineering and conform to ASHTO standards. This may include requiring shared driveways between lots one and two. Then you could strike three and seven. I'll try not to be so wordy next time. I apologize. <laughs> uh, All right. Thank you, Mr. Berg. Is there anyone else? Yeah. Anything else to say? Right, right, right. That's what we're getting confused on. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, I've oh. discovered that. <laughs> it's not on the but it's not in the numbers are not in order. Staff, if we get those uh, what you just verbatim written out uh, so we can just add it into the motion when we get to that point. Make sure when the commission votes we're voting on the correct thing. Correct. Yes. To simplify, and we'll make this uh, statement when it comes time for voting that we'll go off, go off of the agenda. Right. Okay. Thank you, okay. Mr. Berg. All right. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this application? <coughs> Is there anyone, anyone here against it? Thank you. Number six, 460 and 462 <coughs> Street. This application is recommended for tentative approval. Is the applicant present and in agreement with the recommendations? They can't hear me. Is uh, there anyone here to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone here to speak against it? Thank you. Uh, I've got a quick question. On well, number two, it was mentioned to uh, the retention of the 25-foot minimum setback along George Street. Are there not exist existing structures that are within that setback? It would apply to any new construction. Why would we do that with any new construction? It's a requirement of both the subdivision regulations and the zoning ordinance in this area. I mean, every house on that street is okay. right up on the street. The commission can waive that um, 
Bert just brought up, this is in a historic district and a historic district overlay, you can have a setback that goes in line with the adjacent structures. Uh, so the commission could waive section VD9 of the regs regarding that front setback. Mr. Arrell? Yeah, uh, my client did bring that up to me. Um, I thought it was, I, I've never seen it waived before, but if it's, if it's something that can be done, Absolutely. Uh, I've never, I would have come here and posed that question, but I've, in my experience, I haven't seen that brought. But uh, if, if we can, in lieu of the 25-foot setback, you know, based on existing structures or whatever it may be, we would ask the committee to consider that. Just to clarify, the reason why it would be recommended is because the underlying, underlying zoning ordinance would allow that lesser setback. Okay. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone here to speak to it? Number seven, 110 Burgard Street, the GMO subdivision. Ms. Latham? Yes, ma'am. If I may bring up, there are actually four existing curb cuts along lot proposed lot one to Telegraph Road, what's identified as St. Joseph Street, and the staff is agreeable with those remaining, so that would revise condition number six on the agenda. Is so it would, would, would revive it to existing curb cuts? Yes, ma'am. Do we know the purpose of lot two? Yeah. Is the applicant present? Well, I posed this question to the applicant and I was informed that lot two was purchased uh, when it was a parcel in that configuration and they were just maintaining the same configuration when they were going into the parcel or the lot process uh, in case at some future point they wanted to sell it. So this, this property is owned by the city and they're going through the subdivision process so that the third lot can be potentially sold mm -hmm. and the city will rule retainership of lots one and two. Okay. The city owns the whole parcel now, but not it's, and it was at one time divided when the city purchased? I was informed that the lot two portion was purchased in that shape so that uh, they are, are trying to maintain the original parcel shape when it was acquired by the city city Anyone here to speak against this? Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone here to speak against this application? <coughs> Thank you. We will move on to number eight, 3703 Ochoa Road. <coughs> Recommendation this rezoning has been recommended for denial. Yes, sir. Todd Dempsey, I'm with uh, Burton Property Group. We're the parent company of BRPC Holdings. Um, before I give you kind of a backstory of this project, um, we have already indicated to staff that we, we would uh, go with a more restrictive zoning, LV2, on this instead of B2, which should eliminate um, some of the more uh, obnoxious uses, I guess, that are allowed under B2 to give more comfort to staff on what uh we're trying to do with the property so we're uh we would like to change that now if we can to go to a b2 from b2 to lb2 okay. um and just to give uh council a little backstory on this property so you can kind of understand what we're dealing with um there's some pictures up behind you that show you the current condition of this property 
This property is a is a shielded uh, property. It's on the the historic uh, development commission has a easement actually on it, and the owner of this property is infirmed right now, and, and uh, they have a power of attorney that is handling everything for them, and a, a uh, person that has power of attorney is handling it for them. And there were no pack taxes paid on it, and the city filed a list pendants on it, and the city actually actually tack and and it owned it, and so. Um, the current situation uh, that it finds itself in is, is going to be the situation that remains unless somebody steps in and, and does something with it. Um, it's kind of caught in no man's land because of this situation with the owner, but also it's on the city's blight list to be condemned, but you can't condemn it because it's got a, a shield on it. And so um, we're a commercial development company that, that does shopping centers mainly and restaurants, and a bunch of us live by this. and. Uh, the opportunity came up to do something with this, which is was a little bit of our wheelhouse and actually get involved in something fun instead of building grocery stores and restaurants, uh, which people tell us what they have to look like and what you have to do with them. And so uh, we approached the representative, the owner, um, to get involved with this and see if, if we could fix it, basically. And just for uh, some more information to you guys, there the Mobile Historic Development Commission actually has a, a predictive easement on this property, like all shielded houses. So we have a level of uh, influence over this property, even if it gets rezoned. Uh, and the easement is so specific and restrictive that, that you can't change landscape or cut a tree down or move a bush without their approval. So um, even if we were to get rezoning on this, it's not like we can just go do whatever's in the zoning code. There's still a layer of protection on that property because it is historic. And um, the reason for the rezoning, obviously, is we get to show one of these, uh, why one of these reasons is applicable. Well, right now, it's R1, and the, the condition of the structure, but also the location up on the right-of-way is not conducive to residential uses. No one's going to live there, and no one's tried to live there for a really long time because of that. And uh, in addition, the money that it would take to bring that house back into order because of the specifics regarding the easement and um, the shield on it, you have to repair it in such a manner that you can only use certain materials, so on and so forth. And so it's uh, it's going to take a unique situation for somebody to step in and, and remedy this. Uh, and we feel like we're the people to do it. Do it. But in order to do that, we need to rezone it to LB2. Um, and there is not uh, uh, any available um, B zoning along that stretch. Now, B3, I believe, is right across the intersection. But going down, uh, there is not any other available parcels for this type of use. So that's um, one of the reasons. And then, as everybody is probably familiar with the village of Spring Hill, that area is changing. And um, we think that this should be an addition to that continued redevelopment of Spring Hill. So I'm happy to answer any questions you all have, have about it. I have a question. It. Please. Thank you. Um, the LB2 um, does allow, allow alcohol beverage license if it's like a restaurant, you know, t sit down type stuff. So do you anticipate, the, is that, that the reasons you need the LB2? Because we have a letter in support by a nearby neighbor, but they're recommending, and they put it in, into brackets, a light commercial and then office application, which would be the B1. Is an, an office is not what you're thinking about, a more nine to five, or are you thinking something that will have a profile requiring the LB2? Our preference is all off. That's what we see it as, mm -hmm. but um, I mean, we're developers. We have to be honest. We're not going to, we don't want to limit ourselves to, to any potential use with, with a structure of this character and in this condition. And so that's why for LB2, I mean, if it's a, uh, kind of like a carpe diem type place or something like that that would end up selling, you know, alcoholic drinks in the evening or something like that. You but would contemplate that as a potential? Yes, at this point we would. I mean, we're not looking to put a bar in there or a late night establishment by any means. And again, anything we do, the Mobile Store Development, development is going to have to sign off and approve I'm that sorry, too. I'm sorry, I lost what you said. I said we are not anticipating that to be a bar. That's not what we want. I mean, live up the street from this. I not aiming for that but sure. again the mobile historic development commission has approval over anything 
we do with this property. Even the use of it? Not the use, right. but any Just improvements. And so yeah. we can't go in and, you know, put bars in and, and things like that if they don't um, well, that approve would be it. interior. They, they're more concerned about the historic integrity. They on. have control over everything according the to that easement. The use of your building, even though you zone it in a certain classification? Indirectly, by the way that they approve any improvement to, to it. That goes for footprint of the building, any interior improvements, since landscaping. I yeah, it's. I'm not, I'm not doubting. I just want clarification. No, no that's. Yeah, I, okay. When I read the title commitment and the exceptions and I saw that, I was up. Uh, surprised to say the least that it was that repressive parking on site the yeah. site plan that we presented has uh, more parking than is required by code and it's up there behind you now do you do you anticipate using those other there's some additional things on this struck on this footprint not for any type of habitable structure no there uh, it's kind of a, a an old looking beaten down chapel thing and then the other one is just a square so you don't plan to make that into any, any kind of detail or, or no i mean maybe a storage room for you know something but probably not our focus have, our focus is really on the really main structure and if you can see on that drawing on the right and left sides of the building uh our proposal is to add about i believe it's 200 square feet i can't read it because it's too far away and my eyes are bad but i believe it's 200 square feet on each side i didn't know yeah, so, oh, so when you say addition, that's what you're, but you're going to you're gonna etch that and not use these other buildings, so this doesn't require a PUD, correct? Right? This is not a PUD. That's correct. That's in correct. our discussions with them, they're not trying to use those other two buildings. They're just historic on the site, and you can't okay. I'm just going by what I'm looking at. Yeah, no, that's fine. And that, that drawing may be a little misleading. Behind the building, it looks like there's another structure coming off and then one coming long ways. That's just a brick patio area. If you go back to the pictures, you can see where the where the um, the back wall is actually like collapsing down, down. And I think you can see the brick area in between the main building and that first little uh, secondary structure. What's the total square footage when you make your addition to your picture? I think it's like 1,600 square feet or something like that. I mean, it's small. And the additions are for restrooms, correct? Yeah, the addition would be uh, probably for restrooms or um, something like that, you know. I mean, that's what we have planned right now is we kind of envision a lawyer's office or, or something like that for this. And, um, that, you know, we spend all day getting told what we can do with buildings by retailers. So this one is a little bit different something fun to work on for them forever. When, when you do the additions, does that have to go through the historic? They approve that, they yes. Approve they that approve the design? materials, the design, everything. So they basically have control over everything that we can do on this have, property. Have you spoken to the nearby neighbors? Um, my surveyor is one of them. <laughs> He's here today, but other than that, no. Not to your knowledge. I think, I think they got the public notification that was mailed out by by our uh, right. surveyor, but other than that, no. Okay, thank you. One of your limiting factors is going to be your parking, because you are real real tight on parking. I know you have your requirement, but it's going to be, going to be tight. Um, I've been in this property before. It's a very charming structure in its day, I'm sure, and it's, it's a shame to see it in the condition that it's in, but you know, so I think anything would be an improvement over what it is now. Yeah. Any further questions? Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this application? Oh, and one more thing let me add before I leave. Uh, we have a historic development uh, consultant, Stephen McNair. We've engaged to help us on this, so to make sure we you know, stay between the lines and do everything we're, we're supposed to do. So that's another level of comfort everybody should have that, um, you know, McDonald's <laughs> isn't going here, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dempsey. Any further questions? Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this application? Yes, ma'am. I'm Marilyn Foley and a neighbor at 3702, which is just across Old Shell. And um, we've lived here for about 18 years and watched the property decline and had hoped for something to be done without rezoning. But at this point, we really feel, feel like this is the most practical application for this and thank you for clarifying some of those things 
but um, we we think it's a derelict property that's a fire hazard, dangerous for people that are using the sidewalk, and a habitat for vermin, and um, are quite frustrated with it and concerned about it, and, and it affects the property values and in the neighborhood as well as Spring Hill. So I hope, I hope we can see something good come of it because it is a charming property. Thank, Thank you, Ms. But Bowen. ma'am, just so I'm clear, were you also comfortable for a retail if it was a coffee shop or a little restaurant or something like that? Are you okay I think with so. I, I didn't know that about that rezoning, um, um, but I do feel confident that he's a, a neighbor too and that he has concerns over that. and that Again, that would be an improvement over what's there. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone here to speak against this application? Uh, my name is Scott Bowman. I live at 213 Wacker Lane South. I'm actually the property that is directly behind um, this, this site. And my major concern on, I don't get me wrong, with that, I, I agree with what's been said. The, the property is in, in very bad shape, and anything, any improvement would be um, a help. But um, at the same time, I, got a, I, I have some concerns. The, the parking, or at least the congestion on Wacker Lane South right now, with the apartment complex or condominium complex across the street, the parking on Wacker Lane at probably 90%, of the, I've lived at, at 213 Wacker Lane for nine years. And the the parking situation there with the apartment complex, complex, when they park on the street, which they do every single day, it turns Wacker Lane south into a one way going towards O'Shell Road. And I'm just concerned with, with an additional, if it goes to a retail or, um, you know, if it, a, a, a professional office probably wouldn't be as bad, but if it has the opportunity to go to a retail or a coffee shop or anything like that, I think the parking could, could become a, could, a, a become an issue um, another thing that I'm concerned about is the um, obviously living right behind it is there's the bus zone that I would be allowed with my house with their parking along with this site plan I had the first time I'd seen that uh, shows their, their parking basically right up to the property line um, um, there I would have some concerns about a buffer between would they be able to back up back some of that parking up to not where it would where it would not be directly on the uh, property line, and then also the um, uh, with the parking lot. If, if there's a business there that would have nighttime activity, it would also obviously be lights. Um, I'd be concerned about the lighting of the parking lot being right directly behind that also. Um, and then lastly, um, the and this is just from my experience with the apartment complex across the street. They have have they have a, a dumpster which is picked up at all hours of the night um, this place if it, if it becomes a commercial building I'm sure it would have to have sure service of some sort and they can hardly service the one that's there now on Wacker without um, matter of fact they come at two o'clock in the morning now because there's hardly any congestion on Wacker at that point at that time but uh, that would be a concern also so thank you thank you sir madam chair yes sir uh, if we could have traffic engineering expand on those thoughts at all, uh, the width of Wacker Lane, uh, with regard to any cars that are parked there, parked there and the, you know the, the possible turning issues that people would have co coming in out of that proposed parking area. The the issue I understand with the apartments is is not that there isn't enough room for them to park on their site. It's just that they don't. Um, we can sign no parking in that area, especially adjacent to the. Um, the apartment complex with very little trouble um, if I don't think the neighbors are going to want it down the street going back towards Zimlick um, it's probably going to really just need to be limited to this area that's going to possibly be commercial on both sides but that's definitely something we can do and have looked at in the past with previous thoughts of development on this property let's uh, let's uh, prepare a memorandum if possible so we can look at that administratively to determine if that's the best path forward. Okay. Thank you. Uh, question for staff. <clears throat> if the zoning change is approved, would the applicant be required to come back later to apply for a PUD? Only if those additional buildings are habitable. 
if they remain as is or are used for storage, file storage, archival storage, things of that nature, then no, because they would be considered accessory. So they're able to, to accommodate their parking requirements and um, buffering requirements and lighting requirements and all that on? Correct. Uh, full compliance with all municipal codes and ordinances, a subdivision to create a legal lot of record, possibly a sidewalk waiver if one is not proposed along Wacker. Um, and then, like we said, the PUD, if there will be more than one habitable structure on the site. I have a question or some more yes, dialogue. This is kind of similar to some degree to the resters. Um, I think that came in as a variance to become more of a commercial footprint in the area in a very residential section of Spring Hill. And um, so I was wondering if the applicant um, would work with the neighbors and talk about incorporating certain things into this application that kind of gave the comfort zone because the LB2, um, just by right of that, that pretty, might surprise some of the neighbors the next morning what could happen. But if there was some kind of, um, you know, I guess neighborly consideration race that become part of the application well, for well, hours of operation and lighting in the parking lot. I know we have a code that says you can't blare it, you know, to the residential. Yeah, I'm but, but I'm just wondering if that's kind of. Can something. I come back down here and answer some of that? Hold on, just yeah. one second. Let me jump in for a second. The B2 that was proposed is a heavier or more intensive use than an LB2, and there's one neighbor here today. Um, um, Two notes. One and one and opposing. Opposing. Well, we have called for the other opposition. I mean, okay. okay. Well, my, I guess my point is there was an outcry and an outpour of people for resters. I, I do think the feeling in this area <clears throat> is to let's move forward and renovate this building that's dying every day that it rains inside of it. Um, and I, I just think delaying it would be uh, undue burden. Yeah. Let me, if I can answer a few of the questions. Uh, she was absolutely correct on the being in compliance with all the codes, but on top of that, I mean, uh, we will have a uh, uh, on the rear property line a, a opaque fence that you can see through, um, which will be another. What obviously, size were you were you contemplating? I think uh, code is either eight feet, six, six. feet, something six. like that, six feet, and so that, but also some landscaping back there, and then obviously we'll have to submit a photometric plan, which will you know. You can't just shine lights in somebody's house so that right. should alleviate the concern on that Todd while you're on that point let me so the 10-foot residential buffer is your parking and do we know if the parking is actually in that buffer or this plan may not be accurate that that picks that because this shows a 10-foot residential buffer on the Meeting south side the but it also shows parking in in that buffer area yeah it's my understanding I think she parking's knows allowed in a buffer Okay, but then he also said he had a buffer. So, I, do you know what your buffer on that south side by chance? I don't remember exactly what it is, okay. but I know we're planning to put a fence up there. It's just another level of protection between the two, two uh, properties. But um, one one thing I, I also just wanted to bring up in regards to the parking to make it clear to everybody is that uh, we can't touch those buildings, obviously, and so we can't really design this any other way. We went up and about. Uh, hours and hours with our with our engineer cycling to figure this out because of that back left building right there and that's just something to take in consideration that of why the footprints laid out, laid out uh, as it is for parking and then one other thing i just want to bring up is um we were able to get enough time from the seller who is again infirmed through their representative to basically get through this hearing <laughs> and um to try and rezone this because uh, trying to get anything done with them is a monumental task. And I don't want to put that out there as a negative thing. I just want to make everybody aware of that, that um, that is an issue related to, to this element. Um, and it's a concern of ours as the developers going in that uh, anything, I guess like Taylor was mentioning, a burden of, of these other things may put this in jeopardy 
and on a lot of projects that's not the case um, on this one it is and um, I just want to speak that out so people are aware of that because it has taken moving a mountain to even get to this point to get us in the position to do that and y'all may not care about that but I wanted to put that out there for the record on what we're deal dealing with. and I think the neighbors around that have seen that over the course of the time that nothing has been done on this and that's one of the reasons why. Can we Would get staff you? to read off a list of uses under that could be classified under LB2 just for the record? <laughs> put her on the spot. Okay, some uses that would be allowed would include at an antique store, an apothecary, um, appliance sales and service, appliance repair, art gallery, art supply store. Uh, go back to the restaurant area here. A regular restaurant that could include uh, carry out service, a restaurant that has a drive through um, let's see a public desktop publishing radio and television repair ice cream shop interior decorator furniture sales so so it goes to say a whole lot, a whole lot, a whole lot of different options could be put there under LB2 yes could we put putting in the zoning stipulation that will limit that the applicant would self limit to a certain type of, of business the applicant could limit yeah, the voluntary, voluntary condition well, let me ask and would use you be willing to settle for b1 since your focus is office and if in fact you had a suitable is b1 um, does b1 allow a restaurant with no, carry out yeah, but my, my point is if if you had something the neighbors would agree with you on in the lb2 area you could apply for a variance isn't that right rezoning change or rezoning I mean, considering the property i think it would be better just for the applicant to self-limit the but uses we even plan on putting there just in a list of two or, there, or four yeah if there's any specific uses of lb2 that are concerned we're happy to listen to those but again with, with with the i mean we're taking the risk to go out and do this on a nightmare of a project that's got so many levels of of approvals outside of even our control to handcuff ourselves even even more is is a hard pill to swallow when we're already fighting with basically both hands behind our back to do this um given the nature of the structure its condition and then um all of the approvals that we're going to have to get to do anything on this anyway so i didn't hear the question i mean i honestly didn't hear the question down there and i don't know if y'all can hear me or me i mean i know we did have you know mr bowman speak and had some concerns i mean i don't want to discount his his opposition or that but i honestly think lb2 would be a great use for this property i mean you know i know it makes you know, if it was a little restaurant or pastry shop or coffee shop, I think that'd be great for the area. So I don't know why we want to limit him to be one at this point when it when he has no idea what his ultimate use may be. I mean, a 1,500 square foot restaurant or retailer is not going to be that big a burden in that area, and it's not going to generate that much traffic. Yeah, the key yeah, is little. I mean, that's it's a small building. Also, and I just I don't think given the uh, undertaking that we have we have this that we can limit ourselves to a b1 just because i mean the amount of money just outlay just to even get the thing fit, fit amount of, on consultants is is an is um i mean i drive is by a lot. I, 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 mean, I drive by this site every day and i would never consider doing what you do and i'm in a similar business so yeah i don't i don't know why you're doing it but i commend <laughs> you for doing it um I'm gluttons for punishment. i think it's great but yeah, I mean, myself and uh, some of the other principals of the company live near this. We see it. It's an eyesore, and, and um, it's something for us to work on that's a little bit outside of our normal scope. Like I said, we do shopping centers and restaurants all day. This is something else. It's an undertaking that, A, will 
bring something back to the community, community be proud of and that looks good versus a, I mean, it looks like a drug den and it, it is a fire hazard. I mean, it's disgusting. I walked around there and it looks like the set of a horror movie. I'm not, <laughs> not, not to exaggerate, but it does. Um, and so to, to, I would really not like to limit ourselves just due to the hurdles that are in front of us on this. <clears throat> And Madam Chairman, that. You're, it's very admirable what you're going to do to do. And especially in that area where the walkability has been improved upon. So your clientele, whatever the success that had happened there, you know, maybe some people coming in off the freeway is always how I say it. But for the most part, you're, because of the size, your profile is to be nurturing the community and its success. Um, if you look at that list, can you say, um, voluntarily that it would never it's not going to be a drive-through so like yeah I mean you I, see where I, I'm coming from I do far? and I, I think the best way to approach that and look at it is again to go back to that protective easement on the property and just to look at it. I mean you you can't move those structures and you can't bulldoze them and you and you only repair them based on what this easement says okay and so to do that and to try and expand it at some footprint that would uh, house one of those uses is just not, it's not going to work. You can't so do it. Can, I'll ask the staff, when we talk about rezoning this, can we talk about those things that we automatically are built into restricting the use of that property by virtue of its designation? I'm just trying to ensure that we don't rezone, I mean, because that's the only thing in front, in front of us. And the staff doesn't recommend the LV2. No, the staff, yes, the the staff does. Yeah. Staff V2 or L. Did they didn't re recommend it? They recommend LV2. They did recommend. Yes. yes. I thought, I thought after we reviewed the chart of permitted uses, be better. after we reviewed the chart of permitted uses, we we discerned that the LV2 was a a better zoning classification given the historic nature of this property and understanding um, its dynamic as a neighborhood supportive venue. And so the list of uses that we identified, we felt LB2 was most appropriate. And that recommendation also came from the Historic Development Commission. And that was their agreement as well, LB2. Correct. And just so you understand, they, again, have complete discretion over approval of pretty much everything the on this. The Mobile Historic Development Commission does. Absolutely. I mean, again, it's mm -hmm. so restrictive as into changing landscape. Madam Chair. Um, yes, sir. So, so the list, uh, if I could ask the staff, the list of uses that you read earlier uh, was exhaustive for that classification? Okay. But generally speaking, the use, the most obnoxious use that I heard was a drive through, which wouldn't fit on this anyway, and, and because the architectural limitations would never, I mean, that, that just never work considering the configuration of the lot, and you can't get rid of the buildings, so. That's almost irrelevant. Exactly. Geometry. Okay. Um, with that, with that being said, are there any uses that are of that magnitude of offensiveness to the neighbors? I know that's an opinion and not a fact. Common, you know, just a common sense question. Because I am unfamiliar with all the uses. sit here and identify those but so there's too many listed. but typically speaking lb2 is more restrictive than b2 for the for this yeah. particular purpose that's my like point. a convenience store could be in the lb2 without gas yeah so i mean there's just a lot of uses we'd have to go through and pay well, look at the limiting factor the protection is the historical society and also what limited parking that they have available there so nothing real large can go there anyway exactly so. exactly correct yeah. so so further limitations would probably make it difficult to develop the site which has already seen a pretty long history of failure to get developed okay yeah, the, 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 the size and the location of everything and the limitations by the historical yeah. society you know, nobody can make any promises, of course, or, or predict the future, but other than uh, an office or a carpe diem type, I mean, 1,500 square feet? About, it's yeah. A, I mean, know, it's a, an obnoxious use is going to be pretty, uh, pretty, and, not, not a big chance. And, and with that in mind, um, with the administrative dedication to look at the parking situation, 
uh, uh, on the street that was offensive to the adjacent property owner uh, coming from traffic engineering. I, I think that that, that, that makes it easier uh, without limiting the developer any further. And, and just so you're aware, uh, to repeat earlier, the parking shown on there is more than the code allows to make. To tr that was one of the things we thought about. Is you don't want a bunch of people parking on the street, obviously. And if you've been to the property, the topography is about. I don't have the survey with me, but probably anywhere from four to five to six feet above the road, with a um, some type of wall going along it. So you actually have to have to go up three or four or five steps to even get level onto the property um, from there. And uh, that was another reason why we added some additional parking to the, to the site, because obviously a lawyer's office would, you know, not that much. Does the staff have recommendations prepared for us to um, consider if we were to accept an LB2 proposal? simply full compliance with all municipal codes and ordinances however it would include an advisory that a subdivision application would be required to develop the property additionally if construction of a sidewalk along Wacker was not not posed a sidewalk waiver would be required moreover if those accessory buildings that have been discussed became habitable structures a planned unit development would be necessary so those would be the recommendations just to clarify because it's been discussed so much the existing building is 1535 square feet the two additions are e 200 square feet which would make the total square footage occupiable square footage as proposed just under 2,000 square feet. The, actually, the staff report said it was 1535, which includes the existing building and, and the two additions of 200 square foot. Is that that's how I interpreted it? No. So I, I think I think I thought it was 1530. Not that it really matters, but yeah. Even if that's the maximum, the parking that they are able to provide would exceed minimum standards for office and retail at one to three hundred, as well as restaurant gotcha. at one to one hundred. And six parking spaces would be required, but twenty-four are proposed. Based on one to three hundred, yes, the six is what would be required. And again, uh, Ms. Rich, the reason we have more than just the six was the concern of people parking on the street, just to make sure that we were kind of self-contained and not contributing to any issues with any neighbors on the parking front. Yeah, that, that's going to be the most likely issue down the round the road is once you get it developed is parking, people parking outside on the streets uh, for whatever type of business you have. We see that all the time with. Uh, with Carpe Diem, major parking issues there. So um, that would be the only concern here. But you, you've got a lot more parking here than what's required. So hopefully that'll be sufficient. Thank you, Mr. Dempsey. Any further questions or comments from the commission? Thank you all. Uh, I'm going to call number nine, which is the northeast corner of Pepper Mill Road and Africatown Boulevard. This application has been recommended for approval. Is the applicant present? He's indicated that he is, pre he is in agreement. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to this application? Yes, yes sir. Commission, my name is Orlando Pogue. I live at uh, 660 Shelby Street. Mobile, Alabama, Magazine Park Community. I am in, in opposition of you know, this uh, zoning as it is right now. Right now, we haven't been notified. The community haven't been notified. They didn't put no posters up nowhere around our community. It's, it's one sign under the Vidoc on Bay Bridge Road. There's no signs on Africa Town Boulevard, Paper Mill Road. There's no signs there, and we don't know what's going on. The community is not aware of what's going on. You understand? 
We don't know what type of noise hazards going to be. We don't know what type of dust hazards, what type of environmental issues that's going to affect our community in that, that, that general area. So I'm opposed to it. Okay. Any Thank questions? You, sir. Staff, could you address the notification process, please? Notifications required to all property owners that fall within 300 feet of the perimeter, outside perimeter of the property to be rezoned. And that would be first class mail. It is not certified. Well, there are no residences within 300 feet. So what about signage on Africatown Boulevard or Paper Mill Road? Where would the signages have been posted? I don't know exactly where the sign was placed, but typically when staff goes out to place the signs, they put it by, by the entrance to the facility, which in this case may have been underneath the bridge proper. And in regards to notification, it appears the only uh, potential residential address on the, our list is uh, the Adam, uh, Carrie Adams, Lewis Dicey, and uh, Eugene Collins at 626 Shelby Street. And that might be only because this would be the first residence here past what used to be the credit union. So th this might be within 300 feet. That's going to be about the closest sing single residence to the property. So and it's sir, property owners next to the uh, the front part that's being rezoned towards towards up. Uh, what the, the purpose is to rezone the entire uh, facility into one zoning district, which is part of a project that's going on over here on the main portion of the Kimberly Clark site. Uh, they're going to be building a new uh, manufacturing facility that will handle or process paper and then a uh, power generation plant on their site. Mr. Poe, where, where is your home located? I'm 6'6". Six, six, I'm right next to the Collins family. In fact, that's my cousin. We're on that street, been notified. We, we didn't, didn't receive anything in the mail. No one talk, spoke to us. The people that want to rezone the property up there haven't spoken to no one in the community. We don't know what's going on. Here, it's 300 feet. They wouldn't follow the Ms. Pat has just pointed it out that the 300 foot line would have ended here on, on the Credit Union prop, property and it would not have actually extended past that point. So uh, officially, there was, was no requirement to notify anyone past the credit union location. Is the applicant present to answer some questions? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Pratt. Thank you. Um, just, just a minute, guys. Is there anyone else here to speak in opposition to this application? <coughs> Good afternoon. My name is Ramsey Sprague. I live at 63 South Fulton Street, uh, 36606. I'm half of the Mobile Environmental Justice Action Coalition, and we reviewed this application, reviewed the decision to subdivide from June 21st, contingent on today's rezoning. Uh, we have longstanding concerns with any diminishment of residentially zoned properties in the community. We feel like that is out of alignment with the Africatown neighborhood plan. Uh, that was approved by the City Council in 2016. The plan went through dozens of residents' hands uh, to establish their firm commitment to seeing no further industrial zoning encroachment in the community. The Africatown, this uh, site falls well within the Africatown uh, planning area as defined by the City Council. Uh, the lack of notification, the lack of engagement is concerning. And we've experienced this time and time again with Kimberly Clark. We've reached out uh, in good faith on multiple occasions to have their good faith participation in some of our community events, including a immediately adjacent to their property back on June with the celebration of the launch of the Africa Town Connections Blue Way project with the National Park Service. We received no response. Lack of uh, community engagement speaks volumes, and I think uh, Mr. Pogue's concerns are, uh, are duly stated and should be noted. And we feel strongly that this is not in congruence with the overall uh, 
plan for the community and would like to see this be denied. We understand that there is no legal obligation for Kimberly Clark to consult with the community, but that it's not appropriate that they continue to not do so when there is so much investment in the future of the community from residents and residential stakeholders alike. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else here to speak in opposition to this? Have application. Would the would the ad like to come down and address the commission? Bruce Smith, Coles Murphy Glover. Um, this is a uh, this is part of uh, a rezoning that the city requested Kimberly Clark to to do. I believe that it was residential and business, and it was asked to to be rezoned as in uh, into industrial. Um, everything over there in that area on that side is uh, heavy industrial. Um, it just kind of kind of just to match everything that's already zoned for Kimberly Clark to match up with all their existing property over there, and just kind of. <clears throat> bring everything else up to uh, the current standing of, of every piece of property they have over there. Um, I think the only reason why this is up here is because of, uh, like they said, the, uh, the ongoing project that they have inside their plan. Not any additional uses or changes. So is anything planned to be developed on this? I know you're cleaning up zoning. It's one, one plus zone three different things, I2, B2, and R1. Is anything proposed to be developed on this site? No, sir. Do you know from just <coughs> driving around the site where that zoning notice sign would have been posted? I, I, yeah, I, 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 I would assume that it was would have been placed at the at the entrance. So. But I'm confused. <coughs> I thought they were triggered to do the rezoning because of building a new structure. Is that not accurate? It was a PUD and a sub. I believe the other development, there you go, was it, there. It's, it's, it's going to be south of the, of the, of the Bay Bridge Road. It's on the other side of the railroad track. It's on number 12. On That's number 12, I think. On our, yeah. Well, that, that is a separate it's a, it's application a completely. Uh, the next item on the agenda for Kimberly Clark occurs south of the bridge. It's for a new training building. But the previous PUD and sub, which triggered this rezoning that you're considering today, is for northern portion of above the bridge due to two new structures that are being built adjacent to the area that's being rezoned to the east east up, which is further away from existing residential that we're discussing. Yes. So the new construction is occurring over here, to the east of the site being rezoned. And as part of the PUD that was previously approved by the Planning Commission, there was a requirement that this piece before you today be made one zoning district rather than three zoning districts. On item number nine. Yes. So right now there's nothing being proposed to be built on this. No new construction on this this is proposed at this time, and right. nothing has been presented for that. This if anything's ever developed on if we approve the zoning whether it's you know, if it's ever developed they'll have to come back in for a PUD yeah. on this piece because then it'll be tied to the prior PUD yeah. so if we clean up zoning day we're n that's not giving them the ability to develop this site. thank you I would like to ask if y'all had have had the opportunity to discuss with any of the surrounding neighborhoods what y'all are doing, what your plans are, thing like that. No, ma'am. Have you I'm attempted to reach out to the neighborhoods in any way, shape, or form? Uh, Mr. Coles? Gary Coles, uh, 457 St. Michael Street. I have spoken several times about this, and Kimberly Clark has a representative on the Africatown Business Community Development Board, and they have discussed what's being done as far as the new power plant and the new facility uh the the, the uh 
packaging facility that's going to be developed over on the east side of the railroad tracks and this was a part of the cleanup that was i guess that y'all told us to do from the pud when they came to ask to build the power uh the uh the power plant and the packaging facility so that the people who come to the Africatown business development community meetings are aware of what's what Kim Clark is doing yes ma'am thank you any further questions by commissioners okay thank you we will move to, to number 10 which is 5188 and 5208 Mobile South Street, Royal Lagoon Seafood Subdivision. The applicant present and in agreement with the staff recommendations. He has indicated so. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone here to speak against it? Thank you. We will move on to Number 11, the east side of Cockcock Causeway at the east terminal of Dunlap Drive. It's also an AT&T subdivision. The application is recommended for tentative approval. Is the applicant present? The applicant in, in, approval, in agreement with the staff recommendations? Thank you. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone here to speak against this application? Thank you very much. Number 12, the southwest corner of Bay Bridge Road and Herbert Street. Uh, this application has been recommended for tentative approval. approval. The applicant present. And is Bruce Smith, Coles Murphy, uh, 457 St. Michael Street. Um, we just had uh, one thing that we wanted to uh, address was the uh, tree requirements um, we the the entire frontage of the property is underneath the uh, Bay Bridge and there's overhead power lines right there so we would like uh, some relief from that if we could, could uh, bank the trees we we're willing to do that um, just so that we we don't we don't have to go plant the trees underneath the, the bridge and the, uh, the power line which item number is that on the number three and it specifically allows that yeah. coordination with planning and zoning staff to make sure that only the trees which are able to th thrive are planted with the remaining to be banked and if that's none they may all be banked so that's all been already been addressed all right and also the, uh, the on the for the for the subdivision we just want to be known that uh, the uh, Alabama power company easement that is just to the south of the building has uh, has uh, been vacated, so we would like that to be ref reflecting the, the final plat. And we, we can we can provide any kind of documentation that's necessary to include that. Where is it on the uh, application? Number four, I believe, is what you're referring to. And if that easement's been vacated, it at the time the plat's recorded was submission of documentation just to show why it's removed. That that's fine. Um, let's see. To any easements, maybe um, so. If the easement's not there, that condition simply wouldn't wouldn't apply. So no need to change anything. Yes. On that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of this application? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition to this application? Again, my name is Ramsey Sprague, 63 South Fulton Street, representing the Mobile Environmental Justice Action Coalition. Uh, largely in principle, we don't have major opposition to this, but we do feel that it's inappropriate that Kimberly Clark has not engaged the full breadth and spectrum of the community. The Africatown community and business form does not represent uh, the Mobile County Training School, Training School Association, uh, clean, healthy, educated, safe, and sustainable Africatown, the Center for Fair Housing, Mobile Environmental Justice Action Coalition, 
uh, Yorktown Missionary Baptist Church or many of our other coalition partners. Uh, we've in fact been deliberately excluded from that group's considerations and the overtures from industry to that group seem very focused on pushing through a, a, a very specific agenda. We wish that we would be consulted with in good, in good faith because we approach these issues with good faith and don't feel that this is reciprocated on behalf of industry that neighbor us, us and our, uh, our resident and resident advocates from Africatown. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in opposition to this? Thank you very much. We will now move into the deliberation session. Number one, 1610 Union Street. It's been recommended that the one year extension be granted, be approved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Number two, Mr. Orrell, uh, excuse me, east side of Clear Creek Drive. The applicant has requested a holdover until November 2nd. I will make that motion. Second. Second. Just to clarify, that meeting's, on, I believe, on November 1st. You may still have your old uh, schedule in your book. Oh, I'm sorry. And I'm sorry. November 1st, not November 2nd. Okay, okay. Who was, who was the motion? All in favor? Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Number three, 61 Jordan Lane. Move for approval subject to staff recommendations in revising condition four to existing curb cuts. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Number four, 1341 and 1351 Cody Road North. Move to approve based on staff recommendations. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? Motion passes. Number five, five, 7911 Airport Boulevard. Ms. Pop, is it is the one that you have the uh, wording for us on? Basically, whoa, this will be uh, based on the conditions placed on the agenda. And I had something brilliant that has now escaped me. Um, basically, a placement of the note on the final plat stating that the, the driveway location and design are to be approved by traffic engineering and conform to AASHTO standards. This may require a shared curb cut between the lots one and two. That'll be condition number two. Then that would delete conditions three and seven. Perfect. Move to approve with those conditions listed. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any opposed? That, that motion passes. Number Good six, shot. 460 and 62 George Street. Um, <clears throat> Margaret, do we need to do anything besides wave number two on this application, the setback? Uh, technically, you would be waiving section VD9 and VD2 of the subdivision regulations and deleting condition number two. Okay, I'll move to approve um, removing VD2 and VD9 of the subdivision regulations and striking number two. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, any opposed? Number seven, 110 Burgard Street. Move to approve subject to staff recommendations, striking number six. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay, uh, hold on. I'm Are sorry. we striking number six or altering number six for it to read four curb cuts for lot run? Okay. We lot can modify lot. it to accept that, accept that condition. All in favor of the motion as amended? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Number eight, 3703 Old Chell Road. 
I'll move to approve as LB2. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Can I Aye. Just get clarification real quick? Just for my knowledge and for the record, when you say meeting all codes, that would imply that they have to meet the historic development requirements? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, what it can be is full compliance with all municipal codes and ordinances and then just a advisory we can include in the letter regarding the subdivision sidewalk waiver PUD and approval of historic development as it pertains to their easements associated and that would with be the, the recommendation from the staff. condition and then just kind of like I said the heads up if this proceeds you still have these items potentially to to address I, th I think that's important if it yes. could be considered yeah I'll accept that language following their application thank you I'll accept that language with my motion second properly moved and seconded all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed Motion passes. Uh, number nine, the northeast corner of Pepper Mill Road and African Boulevard. Move to approve based on staff recommendations. Second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Just so, just so we, maybe those signs, because this still has to be city council, so the residences can still speak but maybe we make sure that sign is posted on that whatever the, the uh, signs I don't believe are posted prior to the council meeting okay, just for this one correct sometimes they stay around it depends on the issue so if the sign is going to stay there if it could be moved I know it's not a requirement for council but I do think since obviously this body heard from residents it's only going to go a little louder and it'll be advertised for what four weeks so um, they will call for the public hearing after the legal advertised fee is received and then the uh, actual date will be four weeks later thank you um, okay properly moved and seconded all in favor uh, uh, any opposed? Number 10, 5188 and 5208 Mobile South Street, Royal Lagoon Seafood Subdivision. We want to take the PUD and the subdivision separately. Uh, if, if you take them separately, we can or we can. <laughs> well, do let's them do them together. separately. Uh, on the PUD, I move to approve based on staff recommendations and the finding of facts A through F. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The PUD application is approved. The motion for the PUD application is approved. On the subdivision, move to approve based on staff recommendations. Second. Yeah. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anyone opposed? That motion passes. Number 11. The east side of the Cochran Causeway, the east terminus of Dunlap Drive. Move to approve based on staff recommendations. Second. second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And that was the PUD and the subdivision? I'm sorry, okay. that one. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Yes. Move to approve the PUD, approving the findings of fact A through F. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The, the motion passes to approve the PUD. Um, number 12, southwest corner of Bay Bridge and Herbert Street. Kimberly Clark subdivision, which we have a subdivision and a um, PUD. Shall I like to take those separately? Move to approve the PUD based on staff recommendations and finding of facts A through F. Second. Uh, probably moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? That motion passes. Subdivision for Kimberly Clark subdivision phase two. Move to approve based on staff recommendations. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? That motion passes. And that was the last item on the agenda. Is there any further business? Ms. Pappas, do you have any further business? Thank you very much. This meeting is adjourned.